In the late 1800s, Omaha, Nebraska was a booming western city that was soon to become number one in the world in livestock meat production. In the early 1900s, nearly 80% of Omaha's population of an estimated 125,000 people had livestock-related jobs. These workers were primarily of European descent. And from 1910 to 1919, their participation in labor strikes and the First World War left many vacancies at the meat packaging plants. To fill the void, company owners vigorously recruited blacks in the southern states. There were ads in papers in Omaha and throughout the South that beckoned blacks to come north to better wages and living conditions. The wages that blacks were paid at the Omaha plants were lower than white workers, but it was significantly more money than they could earn in the South. Hundreds of blacks began to replace white plant workers, and by 1915, a burgeoning black community was established near the meat packaging plants in South Omaha and the near north side of the city. A new African-American newspaper called The Monitor began circulation in the summer of 1915. The Monitor was published weekly with news stories, columns, and advertising that was vital to establishing a strong sense of community among blacks in Omaha. By 1920, over 10,000 African-Americans were living in Omaha. Because of the rapid growth in the African-American population and employment situations at the meat packaging plants, racial tension began to build in Omaha. This tension culminated in the summer of 1919, when one plant worker in particular met a horrible fate. This was the period of red hot summer. This was the period where about that what it is, you had already had riots in St. Louis, other places. And now you have them in, in Omaha, what happened was, they, they had a woman say that she had been uh, molested or had been sexually uh, abused by a black man. And that's all that needed to be said. On September 25th, 1919, Agnes Lobeck identified 40-year-old Will Brown as the man who attacked her. Brown was then arrested and taken to the Douglas County Courthouse. Before Brown was even identified, a civic storm was already brewing in Omaha due to a series of inflammatory stories published in the Omaha Bee and struggles for political power between racketeer Thomas Dennison and Omaha's mayor, Edward Smith. What's interesting is, is that the mayor attempted to keep them from taking Will Brown out of jail, and he suffered from an inch of his life, of his life being taken from him. And that was really the intent from the very beginning, to, to, to really kill him, as well as to bring about the, uh, the racial tension even more so. On the evening of September 28, 1919, a crowd of an estimated 5,000 to 10,000 people gathered outside the Douglas County Courthouse and demanded that Brown be handed over to them. Inside the courthouse, a frightened judge and other prisoners sent a note down to the crowd, saying that they would surrender Brown. The bloodthirsty crowd could not wait and rushed into the courthouse to seize Brown. Once in the hands of the crowd, Brown was beaten, hung from a lamppost, and shot more than 100 times. Actor Henry Fonda, at the time just 14 years old, witnessed the horrendous event from a second-story window at his father's printing company across the street from the courthouse. The ghastly melee ended with the burning of Will Brown's body. An Omaha World Herald photographer captured one of the most infamous photographs in American history. After the riot, federal troops were called in and for two days, Omaha was under martial law. Even though over 100 people were arrested in connection with the riot and the murder of Will Brown, no one was charged. For Omaha's black community, an editorial picture published in the Monitor spoke volumes. Will Brown was buried in 1919 in an unmarked grave in Powders Field at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Omaha. Ninety years later, in July of 2009, a man from Riverside, California, Chris Abair, who has no ties to the city of Omaha and has never visited before, was moved to pay $450 of his own money for a marker for Will Brown's grave. 
Hebert said that he watched a special on actor Henry Fonda, which mentioned the riot and how it affected his life and his acting career. Hebert also said that he hopes people will stop by the headstone and reflect on what happened to Will Brown in 1919, so that we may never let ourselves sink again to this level of inhumanity.